So today, I'm going to talk about how to give a good talk. And before I start, I want to ask you a question. What do you think about presentation in Taiwan? So you've been to probably to maybe astronomy meeting or physics meeting in Taiwan, right? In average, what did you think about the, how, how good are the talks are in the meeting? Including you know, faculty talks, student talks, postdoc talks. So A is uh, clear, everything understood. Talks are talks in Taiwan are excellent. B, 80% okay. C, 50% okay. D, I don't understand most of the time. Okay, so can everyone raise your hand to one of the A, B, C, D? So who thinks Taiwan's talk is great? A. <laughs> How about B, 80%? Okay. <laughs> One person. C, 50%. Oh, okay, okay. A lot of people, 50%. How about D? I don't understand anything. There are some people. Okay, my opinion is E. E. This is horrible. <laughs> uh, compared to my, my previous experience outside of Taiwan, uh, talks in Taiwan is uh, not so high standard. But today, for well, you're lucky to be here. I'm gonna <laughs> teach you how to improve this. So by the time you walk out of this room, your talk will be improved. Okay, let's start. So first thing to understand is presentation is important. If you write a paper, of course you are writing papers, right? What's the average citation to average paper? Do you know? Uh, how many, okay, how, who wrote the paper so far? Okay, well, how many citations do you have in your paper? <laughs> I never counted. <laughs> you never counted? So, average citation to your paper is something like four or five. Okay, some paper gets hundreds of citations, but average papers. So only four or five people read your paper, seriously. But if you give a talk, in, your, in a big room, for example, if you're in a big room in astronomy meeting, there could be 100 people, right? And 100 people will listen to your talk, right? So it's a good opportunity to advertise your talk. When you write a paper, you work months and months of effort, right? You write a paper, you usually you have to work maybe half a year minimum, or uh, many times you have to work one year or maybe more, right? But a lot of people prepare a presentation just a few days before the meeting, uh, or prepare in a rush, and uh, they give a poor presentation. This is not a good way. Presentation is the place to advertise your months of your work, one year of work, so you can prepare a little bit more. Those who give me a talk at ASRC, did you prepare a few days before? Did you have enough time to prepare? I think at least maybe a week to prepare a talk. And this, is, this is something I want people to understand, but presentation is not how much you put in your 10 minutes, but it, instead it's how much people understand your presentation. For example, a lot of people do like this, oh, I did a lot of analysis, I did this analysis, I did this simulation, I spent so much time on estimating errors, and then people talk about every, try to talk about everything in 10 minutes, in a rush, and people understand nothing. Compare A and B. So you talk about 10 results in 10 minutes uh, in a rush and then people understand zero. Or B, you did actually 10 analysis but you only talk about most important one. People understand this one. Reason. People don't understand the other nine but people understand this one. Which is better? It's obvious, right? 10 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1, right? So B is better. I want to tell you how much people understand is important. This is called
water, less is more principle. There's no point in talking more than people can understand. Okay, preparation. How do you prepare? Font should be very large so that people in the back can read it. And this is rule two. 30 point rule. Famous presenter John Thomas suggests that 30 point is the minimum. If you think your font may be small, then you are already small. So if you are giving talk, please check your slides. And if your point is less than 30 point, then please make it a little bit larger. Okay? How, what kind of fonts are good? So here, the variety of fonts. Which one is good? If you. <laughs> Nowadays, PowerPoints and Keynotes can have, have lots of variety of fonts, fonts you can use. But this is not the beauty contest of fonts. So if you use this kind of beautiful fonts, maybe this one or this one, it's a little bit difficult to read, right? So my recommendation is Gothic font, um, something like this. These are simple but clear, right? And I don't recommend those serif fonts. Serif fonts are good for papers, um, reading books or papers, then on the paper, then these are times fonts are good, right? But presentation, those thicker fonts, I think it's better, easier to understand. Big route, we need to talk to the back of the people. So, hello Ihan, hello Ihan, the back of the room, we need to talk to him, not to these guys. So, remember, I don't know about the ASRC, but the meeting room might be big, right? So try to talk to the back, the people in the back. If you look at the face of the back of the people, you are naturally speaking louder, so that's, that's one way. Don't look at here, then, uh, oh, oh, Simon, hi, hello, then it's small voice, it's okay, right? But if you look at the back, then you need to have a um, loud voice. And this is not a time to be shy. Some will go, okay, this depends on personality. Some people are shy, some people are not. But at the talk, time of the talk, you don't need to be shy. If there's a microphone, use it, right? If there's a microphone, you can use it, and then you don't have this problem. Do you like these kind of slides? <laughs> this is some one of my students' slides. But, I mean, if you have this kind of, then you don't feel like reading, right? It's already tiring. Just look at it, oh, I get tired. Why are so many slides, right? So here's a third rule, 10 line rule. So, if you have more than 10 lines in your slides, just reduce it. You don't, we don't need a paper-like slide. Okay. That's just, if you put something like this, people just don't, don't read it. So, there's zero information here. Okay. Then, about animation. So, nowadays, PowerPoint or Keynote can do a lot of animations, right? I and mean, I see some people use animation, fancy animation. I'll show you some examples. <laughs> Is this good for scientific presentation? I know one famous professor likes this. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I do, not, I do not recommend this. What I recommend is this. It's just simple appear. Simple appearance. This is simple. If you move your phones, then people's eye and attention are called to the movement. But you don't want people to pay attention to the movement. You don't want, you want people to read the content, right? Read the letters and understand content. You don't want the movement. Uh, 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 uh. Then if your people eyes are caught in a movement, then people are less paying less attention to your content. That's not what you want. Okay. How do you start the talk? This is a very important part. The first one minute is half the battle. How do you start the talk at the beginning? That's very important to talk because, say, this is when you are very nervous. In, at the start of the talk, you are nervous, right? Um, then I recommend remember what you say for the first one minute. For the rest, you don't you don't need to remember whole talks. You know, you don't need to. You are not reading the, the, your 
script, right? But for the first one minute, you decide what to say, and then remember. Then you don't you, you don't get nervous, and then you can start the talk smoothly. And then what I recommend is try to catch people's attention so that people can pay attention to you. You know, when you start the talk, often people are, you know, at the transition, maybe people are checking email, checking Facebook, or people just came into the room, right? So you need to get attention of the people. Now I'm studying, I'm studying, that's what you need. So actually, if we want to put up some picture or joke, this is probably a good time to do that. A lot of people, if you go to a conference, maybe if you go to Taichung, maybe people put Taichung's pictures or something like that, right? Or, or something like, uh, if your talk is the next morning from the banquet, some people put banquet pictures. Have you all seen these kind of things, right? And if you put banquet picture, people pay attention to you. What happened, right? Then you can start talk when people look at it. The, there's a bad example. A lot of people say in the first, my name is Tetsuya Hashimoto. And <laughs> I am from National Chamber University. This is a bad example. People don't want your name. I mean, you are not a, you know, Celine Dion or Tom Cruise, right? You don't people are not paying attention. There are various ways, and it's, it's, there's no single answer to this. But I recommend, say, for example, one example is say, you can say what people learn by the end of the talk. Do you remember how I started this talk? I said, like, by, by the time you walk out of this room, you, your talk will be improved, right? So that's what you, your people can learn from this talk. If you give such kind of hints to the people, then people can focus on that talk. You know, or another example is start with a question, how do, I, how do you give a good talk? Then people can focus on it, right? Okay, I want to know how to give a good talk. So give people something to focus on. Ah, right, 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 right in here. One way to get people's attention. Here, try to catch people's attention. So I started this talk with a question, right? You remember I asked you A, B, C, D, right? And then I forced you to raise your hand. So you have to pay attention to me, right? What is A, what is B, right? So that way I, I caught your attention and then I started regular talk. That's, that's one way to do it. There are various ways, uh, but this is just one way. Where do you start doing a talk? I recommend if you're right-handed on the right side, because if you're right-handed, you hold your pointer on the right hand, right? And then point it to like this. You want to be facing people when you're speaking so that the people can hear you. If I stand here on the left side, my pointer is going to be like this, right? Then I'm facing the platform or the screen to, to, to talk to, right? Now, hello everyone, I'm talking to the screen. That's not what you want. I recommend if you're right handed, you can stand on the right side. Some, in some rooms, the table, the little bit table, speaker's table, right? You don't need to, to stay there because now that we have a remote, right? So you can just go to screen. Because you want people to look at the screen, what your result, your view graphs, right? Then if you are in front of the graph, that's convenient. If you are here, people look at me, then people are not looking at your slide, right? So I recommend stand on the right side of the screen. If you are left handed, it's left handed. Be, you need to be confident. You are the expert, so just be confident. Even if you're a first year student, just be confident. You very likely, this is your subject, your research, so you know better than other people. Even if you're not, if you're not, you can then be, be confident <laughs> and be expert. I suggest have one key point in each slide. So most important in each slide. Then try to focus on explaining that key point, then it's easier for you to go through the slides. If you have many points on your slide, then you get confused. Oh, I need to explain this and this and this, right? So. What else is important during a talk? So Tina, what else is important during a talk?
interaction. Ask questions to speakers or to the audience people, and then you get attention. I saw Tina was sleeping, so I just asked <laughs> Tina what is else is important. Now she's wake up. That's good. There's another important thing I'm going to tell you. <laughs> another important thing is pause. Before telling something important, you could pause a few seconds. Then you get attention. The talk speed should be constant. If you're constant, it becomes, you know, it's a lullaby, a sleeping song. So, Sometimes you go fast, sometimes you go slow, sometimes you pause. Then you, it's easier to get people's attention. Also, eye contact with one person is also important. When you, so I said one key point in each slide, right? When you say key point in each slide, you can look at some people's eye. That way you get, don't get nervous. If you're Afraid of looking at eyes, you can just look at their ties or shirt, okay, or your, their mouth or something like that. So like, oh, this is important, this is important, just talk to one person, one person. I could, then that's a good way not to get numbers. When you're talking, be, this part of be confident, when you're talking, you just stay still. You know, I, sometimes you see a people, okay, my result is, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> then you're just telling the message that you're nervous. Uh, so try to stay still. Try to take out these if possible. Like some people say, well, what's important? Well, this is what this is. In Taiwan, it's a, uh, naga, 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 right? <laughs> this is also just telling I am nervous. You, you don't need to do that. This, if you practice, you can remove this. Okay. Also, never be negative. I see some students say, this is not very important results, but if it's not an important result, don't show. If people look at here, it's important. At the so just be confident. Also, another example, I'm sorry, this is incomplete. We don't need to say this. Even if it's complete, it's incomplete. We don't need to say this. Never go over time. This is not a music concert. People don't like it. People hate it. People want you to leave <laughs> from the, the stage. So make sure to finish your talk within time. Other people don't like it. And that if you go over time, that's evidence of not good enough practice. Because if you practice, you know, right? It's okay to finish earlier. People like it. So this is another thing of practice. So you have the example, right? Say if you, if someone comes to colloquium, the colloquium is just one hour, right? If you call, the colloquium speaker give two hours talk, then you don't like the speaker, right? Oh, I have to go eat dinner. This is Friday night. I have to go have fun. And colloquium speaker talks two hours. You don't like it, right? So how many slides? How many slides are appropriate? General rule is one minute, one slide. But from, from my experience, I think we can generally people can speak a little bit more. So my rule is um, one minute, one point five slides. So for example, ASRC, if it's you have eight minute talk, you can prepare twelve slides. Then probably that's about right. If you have number of number of slides times a minute, times twice, then you're almost sure to go over time. So if you have 16 slides in your talk, then you have to be careful. And remember this less is more principle. If you have 16 slides and then you can make you talk fast and then finish in eight minutes, but then if people don't understand there's no point in putting them so. Okay, and then at NTH is a good school. We have uh, many examples of bad teachers, right? <laughs> As you see, teachers always talk in the background, okay, this is how, this is how to give a good talk, right? In a small letter. <laughs> I'll need a small handwriting, small mumble voice. 
Oh, do not let me scratch on time. <laughs> we have a lot of these examples. Well, okay, these examples are, are to let you to show you bad examples, right? So please learn from us, <laughs> and then don't repeat our errors. Oh, there's a famous paper by Wu Jian. So, <laughs> okay, I'm as, successful, as but I recommend site attendees papers. But maybe not in big meaning, but if you're, say, visiting other universities and I give a talk, then cite those people's um, papers. I'm not telling you to flatter to them, but if you cite their papers, you get attention. If your paper is cited, you look at it, oh, oh my paper is cited, right? So that's a good way to get their attention. Also, I, we can acknowledge collaborators. I thank Ihan and Simon uh, for useful discussions. And then now they look at me, right? So that's another way to get uh, attention. Not to flatter, but to, just to catch their attention. How to handle, handle questions? This is another uh, big topic. Sometimes, you know, you might get difficult questions, you get nervous, right? First of all, pre preparation here too. Every possible pre question you think of, you think of, write down and then prepare the answer in advance, even slides. Okay? Yeah. And then there are some very common, frequently asked questions, such as how does it compare with previous work? Right? That's very good, very common question, right? So just you prepare a slide. Okay? Previous work is something like this, my work is better here. Just prepare, in case something else. What is the sole largest source of error? This is also frequently asked question, right? Um, so you can prepare the answer. The uncertainty here is very big. Or oh, observation uncertainty is big, or systematic is very big. You can prepare the answer. When someone asks a very difficult question that you don't know the answer, this happens, right? Oh, famous folks ask a question, and I'm like, oh, I don't know the answer. Don't panic. And the worst thing that I've often I see is don't make up an answer. If you don't un understand something, uh, then if you start out making up an answer, oh, I think maybe this is a reason, that's not good. If your reason is, has a, a problem, then this professor is going to attack you more, right? Oh, but your reason is bad, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and it goes into a bad spiral. So, if you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know the answer. And then I will look it up, thank you very much. Then there's no bad spiral from there, right? The better way is, oh, professor, that's a good point. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, those famous professors ask you a question, they usually know the answer or some background knowledge. You want to ask them. What do you think? That's good for your benefit, your research, right? So I think I recommend this is answer. What do you think? Then the professor starts explaining, right? Oh, in this paper, this was this, this was this, and that's better for your research too. Okay, one thing is common among top prize winners. So there is a such thing as world championship of giving a presentation. And you know, every year they have championship. There's one thing. About the champions. What what do you think? Charles, what do you think? Like okay, those the end. <laughs> Steve Jobs, you know, Apple Steve Jobs, that he's famous for giving good talks, right? Barack Obama, from a spiritual, he gives good talk, right? One thing about one thing common about them is they all get coached. They have a coach. In this case, you don't have a professional staff to coach you, but you have your advisor, right? Your friends, right? So you can practice with them. And then they can tell you what you don't notice. Say, for example, when you're saying, oh, and naga, 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 many times, you don't notice yourself, right? But your friend look at it, then friend can tell you. I recommend practice at least three times. If you practice three times, you remember what's the next slide and what you do, what you want to say. Then when you give a talk, it's going to be very smooth because you know what to say next because you practice three times. 
The talk just get better and better as you practice more and more. Okay, yeah. This is my last slide, slide so take on our message. I introduce some rules, something like a uh, 30 point rule, 10 line rule, you remember? Number of minutes times 1.5 slides. This is all very important. Talk with about how much people understand, so this is less, it's more principle. And then my suggestion is just practice, 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 that will give you a better talk. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have to give a good luck with your presentation. Thank you.